Hello everyone and welcome to today's event. My name is Rachel Klein and I will be your presenter here today. Today we are talking about creating a mail merge um, export out of the membership module. Um, so this is really handy if you're going in and wanting to take some data out and put it into another program. So this is just the raw data we're going to pull out of the software. So if you're going to use it to upload into another program, on another website, or let's say you're going to pull the data out because you want to put it in Excel and be able to manipulate it, maybe make some graphs, whatever it might be, using the mail merge export feature in membership is a really, really handy way to get your data quickly and easily out of church windows to manipulate it somewhere else. Okay. Let me open up membership. So I do like the example that the workbook is giving us. Um, the example that they walk through is they're wanting to pull a list of all the committee members that don't have an email address so they can mail them and ask them to send in what their email address is. So our criteria of who we need for this export is going to be individuals that are on a committee that don't have an email address in the system. Okay, so if you want to follow along directly in the book, you can, but that's kind of the criteria for who we're going to build this export off of. All right, so two ways to start an export. You can go right here in the middle in the membership module and click on this reports button or you can go up to reports and export at the top reports and labels and then reports directory export here okay just like any of our reporting in membership step one is always going to be select who should appear on the report so this is our query or this is our criteria of who we need to see Okay, there's really a lot of options in here for how to put in your data to get exactly who you need on your export or your report. So step one, edit people selection criteria. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And this is where you are going to input that membership information or that membership criteria that you're needing to use for your people. Okay, so top left select a membership field i'm going to click in here and hit the down arrow and the first thing i'm going to choose right here is groups and classes because i need my individuals who are on in a committee okay which is part of a group or class but if you scroll through this list there are so many different options for you to query on to be able to pull out the people you specifically need so if you have specific querying questions i would direct you out to the resource center i've done a bunch of videos on how to pull the specific people that you need i just did one on basic reports that's out there that'll also give you some good information on who to pull Okay, so anyways, I selected groups and classes. I'm going to come here into my division and the way I've organized my data, I have all my committees here in a department. So I'm going to choose committees and it's going to pull up my three committees that I've set up, finance, trustees, and ad hoc. I'm going to hit select all. And it's going to check all three of these at once. And I'm going to leave it in the present because I just want my people who are presently in one of these groups or classes. And I'm going to hit add to selection. So group classes is one of the following. It's going to list out those three committees. And then it's going to also reiterate that I selected in the present. Okay. But now I want people who are in a committee but don't have an email address. Okay. So I'm going to hit and. I'm not going to choose or. If I hit or for this, then that would mean they would need to meet one or the other pieces of criteria that I'm adding. Because I need them to meet both pieces of criteria, I am going to choose and. Okay. So my next field I'm selecting is email address. And I'm going to choose is blank because I need people in a committee that do not have an email address. So their email address field is blank, okay? Now, if you look over here to the right, you do have some other criteria here you can specify. If you need to include something about giver numbers, you can change this information, which I don't care about giver numbers for this, so I'm not adjusting anything here. 
categories. You can leave it on members or visitors, or you can uncheck visitors. But at this point, we're only worried about my committees. So I'm going to just leave that as is. And I don't need to change anything down here at the bottom for this specific report that I'm exporting. Okay. I'm going to say okay. And now my criteria is going to be reiterated right in here. If I was worried at all about giving or pledging information, I could come down here to number three and I could add some giving and pledging criteria to this list. But again, for this, I don't care about what they've given or pledged, so I'm going to skip right over that. The accounts tab, if you're doing anything with giving or pledging and you want it to be specific about a giving account or giving accounts, you could go here. Again, not worried about it. I'm going to skip that tab completely, and I'm going to go to the sort tab. This is where I tell Church Windows what order I want these people to be pulled out in. You can choose lots of different things here. I'm just going to go down to name for this example, uh, but realistically, you're pulling just the raw data out, so you're most likely going to be able to manipulate it in whatever uh, software you're going to use the data in next. So it might not be crucial to set the sort field for an export, but you can if you wish, okay? Last thing I want to show you down here at the bottom, you can create a saved selection. So if you want Church Windows, the next time you come in here to be able to just with two clicks put all of this information in and not have to rebuild it, you can come down here and save this as a selection. So if I hit the little floppy disk first, I'm going to call this all MIDI members whoops, without email. Okay, so if I save this, this is going to be down here in this little drop box for me. So the next time I come in to step one, all I need to do is hit the down arrow, choose this save selection, and it's going to automatically put in all of the information that I built here on step one. So if you have some pretty um, extensive criteria or reports that you run quite regularly, using this save selection could definitely save you some time, okay? So I'm going to hit next, and I'm going to get my step two to build. And step two is where I see who fits my criteria, and it also tells me or where I set up my export, what data I need exported for the people that fit my criteria, okay? So if you look down here quickly, you can see I have these people in my list that have met my criteria. So they're on a committee and they have no email address listed on their record. Now, for these people, I want to export not only their name, but I also want to export out their mailing address so I can contact them, okay? You might need something else, but the that's what the example in the book's uh, requesting. So that's what we're going to follow. So first thing we have to do up here in the top left is choose mail merge export. This is how I'm telling it. I want this data to be output for me, okay? Right below there, I'm going to hit the new button, and I'm going to create a new mail merge export, and I'm going to call it name and address. Now, something to keep in mind when you're naming your different reports here on step two is you really want to name your report based on the data that you're pooling. Okay, so let me explain that a little bit different. This report here, name and address, I can reuse this export regardless of what criteria I put on step one. So I don't want to call this committee and email export. I want to call this what information I'm actually pulling out on the people that meet the criteria, okay? Because you can reuse this export regardless of what criteria you put in on step one, okay? So I'm just going to call it name and address because that's what information I'm setting up to be pulled for the export. And then it's going to open up my column selector. So this is where I specify what fields I need exported. So I want last name, and I also want preferred name, but I also want their current mailing address. So I'm going to come over here to the right under current address. I'm going to do address one. I'm just double clicking these, and that easily pops them over to the right to be part of the export. I'm going to do address two as well in case anybody has a suite or apartment number. I'm going to do city, 
and I'm going to do state. Now, if I export city and state separately, it's going to pull them as two separate fields on the export. We do have the option right here for city state. So if you want them combined, or if you go to look at it in Excel, the data is the city state is in one column. It's up to you how you need that formatted. And I'm also going to do a zip code here as well. Okay. You can add whatever additional fields you want. There's contact information fields over here, phone and email if you need that, and there's also a bunch of other fields in here. You can do birth dates, age, all kinds of information can be exported just by double clicking and moving the field over to the right, okay? If it's on the right, it's gonna be included in the export, okay? All right, so now I have all of those fields selected that I want exported, and I'm going to say OK. So looking back at this screen, moving forward now, the next time I come in here, if I am doing an export and I just need to know what their name and address is, I already have this set up here in my list, and I can just select it. And then if I decide, oh, actually, I need to go back and add another field to this export, just hit the Select Fields button. That takes you right back into the column selector, and then you can move your items back and forth. Okay? Pretty straightforward. One more thing I want to show you here as well. This column here is the name. This is the name of the field in Church Windows. If you find when you do your export or export your data out, you need the column header to be something different. Maybe you're importing the data into another software and they need the column headers to match very specifically so it looks at the right field of data. You could come in here and you could change this to, I don't know, get rid of this and just have address. So you can come in here and you can customize what the column headers are going to say when you export the data out. Okay, so this is the default name of the field, and this is what <coughs> the column header is going to be in the export. Okay, say okay. Now, next thing I want to point out over here on the top right, these are your export options. Okay, file. This is the file location the data is going to save to. So, for example, let's say I just want to throw it out on the desktop. I'm going to hit the little dot, dot, dot button. My little browser screen is going to open and I'm going to select desktop. Okay, so it's putting it users, Rachel desktop. Here's the name of the file name and address. Delimiter, you can do comma or tab. I want to open this up in Excel for you guys, so I'm going to go with comma. Comma separated value file opens up nicely into Excel. Here's the export name. You can change that if you wish. Um, and then at this point, I'm going to hit the export option. It's going to start building my export for me. It's going to tell me it's been created and give me the specific location where it saved it. Would you like to open that folder? I'll say sure. And then, you know what? I don't have Excel on this machine. That's tricky. Sorry, this is our training machine, and I don't have Excel. It's probably just going to, let me try to open it in Notepad for you guys so you can at least see it open with <clears throat> see if notepad handles it yeah so notepad will open it um, so each field because I did a comma separated value each column that I exported is here across the top and then there's a comma between okay that's what separates each value of data and then if we look in here you can see here is each person's information that met it now if i did have excel in uh, installed on this uh, training machine when it opened in excel the the comma would essentially be a column break so each pieces of these this data would be in its own column in excel okay but regardless of what application you open the data after you export it, it's very easy to go into Church Windows and set up that mail merge export to be able to pull data out and then manipulate it in whatever way you find you need to once you get the data out. Okay? All right. That is everything I wanted to go over with you guys today. Looks like we got about three minutes left here in our scheduled time. So if you have any questions, 
please feel free to chat those in. If you're feeling good with what we covered and you don't have any questions or you don't want to stay and listen to the other ones, feel free to leave. That's totally fine. Um, like I said, I'll get this cleaned up. I'll have it on the website here by the end of the day. You can rewatch it, share it around, whatever works. Um, let me see. All right. Let's see. If you change the data and pull, if you change the data you pull and want to keep the revised data set, can you save the new criteria search? All right, Ellen, let me read this again. If you change the data you pull and want to keep the revised data set, can you save the new criteria? Are you talking about, I'm sorry, Ellen, I might need just a little bit more information. Are you talking about the saved selection or are you referring to once the data comes out of church windows and you want to save it? Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking there. Um, you guys are welcome. Thanks for coming. I hope you learned something new. Um, yeah, Teresa, that column header changing can be really crucial, especially if you're wanting to take the data out and upload it into another application, and they have like preset column headers that it has to search for to make the match. Um, changing those column headers is a really good tool. Um, let's see, Linda says, how would you print out an address label? An address, I don't have time to go into that today, Linda. We have a lot of uh, videos on the website, churchwindows.com. But um, running address labels is extremely similar. Step one's exactly the same. Step two, instead of creating a mail merge, you just choose your label size and how many um, people you want to print on a label, and you print them. It's Labels are super simple. So check out the video on the website, but if you find you have trouble, just give us a call. Um, Ellen says, Rachel, do you really prefer comma separated to tab when importing into Excel? I do. So the reason why is if you do a comma separated value file on most machines, a CSV file is going to default to open up right in Excel. That's going to be like the preferred application, if you will, to handle that type of data when you go to open it. Now, you can still do tab um, if you want to. You will just have to do an import process when you go to open it in Excel. So it'll see that it's a text file. It'll, it's tab separated. So then it's going to look at it and it's going to say, okay, we need to do this little import wizard to pull it in. It's super simple. Um, you can definitely still do tab if you want to. Um, but for me, it just saves me about like three clicks. So I always just do it as a comma separated. Um, let's see. Karen, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, Ellen, I see what you're saying. So you're saying you named it name and address. If you then go back and add phone, can you rename the export? For me, Ellen, what I like to do, I like to have different reports created based on what's in the columns. So I don't typically like to go back in and do select fields and change things around. I like to just have five different reports, 10 different reports based on what I typically need to export out of the data. And then I just pick those different reports depending on what I need to pull. Now, some people I talk to, they have like one report and they just go in and just hit select fields, swap the columns out depending on what they need that day, and then print it. So one way isn't really better or right or wrong. It just depends on how you prefer to use the software. So I'm a little anal about things, so I like things organized, and I like my different reports that match, that have corresponding names. But that's just how my brain works. So um, yeah, Rhonda, you can't import. Um, from Excel into church windows. That's, we just have an export feature. Um, yeah, there's, sorry, but there's no way to take data from a different application and then dump it into membership. Yeah. Yep, there's no importing feature in membership. Sorry about that. Can you save the new data set as a new search? Sure, you can have as many saved selections as you wish. Definitely. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. So if you're typing, just send it in real quick. And I don't want to, I don't want to cut anybody off. 
Um, but if you've got the information you're looking for, feel free to sign out. That's fine. All right. I'm not seeing anything else come in. I'm going to go ahead and end the event. Thank you guys for attending. Um, just so you know, I have April events on the website already. I just got that done yesterday. So if you want to get a jump start on registering, feel free to do that. April is a little light. Uh, Josh is on vacation. I'm going to be on vacation as well. And then uh, with Holy Week, it's just we don't have a lot of attendance. So there's just four events in April. Um, but check them out if you want to join. I have the email set to go out next week, I believe. Um, so keep an eye out for that as well to let you know about the events. But you can also go right out to Church Windows and go right to our training options. And you'll see the webinars page there. And you can just go ahead and sign up now if you want to before you get the email. That's fine too. All right, everybody. Have a good day and hope to see you at another event. Thank you. Bye-bye.